see how my community group on Facebook. So all of the mastermind and group coaching clients, they were all on Facebook. Facebook groups, obviously we had the community calls in there. The program was, um, I think it was like Kajabi. Just simple, a simple setup. But as some of you have been following Sam Ovens with school and Homosian recently invested. Now the truth is I've actually been on school for more than a year or so now, just um, being in different communities myself. So I didn't actually make my own community because I was still on Facebook, uh, but I made uh, my own community recently on there and I basically moved everything over. Because previously I didn't actually need a group because I was doing more done for you services and one-to-one -one coaching. And I literally just needed messenger and at most, I needed um, just any kind of one-to-one -one messaging platform like Slack or Facebook Messenger. But now I've basically moved everything over to school where we have all of our clients now and we're gonna be running the same system on there and it's gonna be much more operated. And it's way better because now you have the community in one place, you have the classroom in one place, you have the calendar in one place, and then you also have a leaderboard system in one place and you have a chat system with all of your clients in one place as well. So everything is basically in one place as opposed to Facebook where the group is there, there's no calendar, there's no content, there's no leaderboard, you have no idea who's like engaged or not. Uh, the chat system is all over the place because it's not dedicated for the community. So in school, when you have a chat system, it's actually dedicated just for uh, your community. So only your community members can really text each other. Now obviously once you join another community, then they can text those community members. But it's, it's, very, uh, it's made for each individual community as opposed to being spread out across all the communities, like Facebook is. But on Facebook, anyone can message you. Uh, on school, you can't really do that. So unless you're in the same community, you can't really message someone that's not um, like in the same community as you. So that's the main thing with uh, school. So I've moved all over there and I'm basically, <coughs> excuse me, so I'm basically all in on school for my community. So that's the main thing. Um, so now let's get into like what I've noticed, so let's say my thoughts on the coaching and consulting market. So I've been observing, you know, the market over the past five years or so, you know, with some of us being one of the biggest people in there, now Homozy and all, there's all kinds of people in the space, right? And of course, you know, I've seen the transition from Facebook ads, YouTube ads, people doing organic, and people do different things like that. And I might actually make a separate video on this, but I'll just touch on it slightly right now, which is, man, this is a mistake I think I've been making uh, myself with my channel. I'm seeing it with other channels too, which is uh, a very successful person, let's say in the coaching space, makes YouTube content, but then they basically barely get any views. And I kept thinking to myself, why does that happen? Because I started my channel too, because I used to post in a different niche. And I would actually get a lot of views and subscribers. But since I started getting into the business consulting, it's dropped dramatically. And I decided to look at other people in the space who are very popular, who are very good at what they do. And they also have very low views. If you talk about coaching and consulting, that is. So I did some more thinking about it and I realized um, that there's actually a better way to go about it. Because I think the way it works is you should have your personal brand on the left side. You should have your business brand here. And then you have your, your personality brand on top. Now I'll explain what all those are. So personality, personal brand, and then business brand. So with me po posting content about coaching consulting, that's actually under the business brand. That has nothing to do, even though my face is in it, it's still under the business brand, which is why it's not getting that many views but it's still in this category. And then you have the personal brand. The personal brand is all the things that um, is me expressing creativity in the things that I'm interested in. So my interests, the ideas, and the things that I like to do are my personal brand, 
right? So if I talk about mindset, if I talk about uh, philosophy, there's different topics like that I create from that sense. That's my personal brand. The personality, that's for people who like me just for me, right? That's for people who, if I post a video of me eating and just talking about my life, what I did today, that's the personality. And that's for people who just like me, completely for me, um, and that's it. And le let me give you an example. So let's take someone even just like, uh, like Mr. Beast, for example, right? So he has this kind of business, uh, business brand on the right. So obviously that's his main, um, his main channel. And the thing with him, because it's so personal with him, actually, I should give a better example, which is someone like, like Michael Saylor. So if you follow Michael Saylor, for example, right? So this, so this is Michael Saylor, right? So he owns microstrategy.com and that's his company. That's the business brand. So you have micro, micro strategy over here on the right. And if you look at their channel, it's very small and they have a lot of content, hours and hundreds of hours of content. And that's like the business brand for micro strategy. And then you have Michael Saylor's personal brand. Now, once again, this is not his personality. Um, or uh, This is not his personality brand. So his personal brand, he talks about Bitcoin. So he has hundreds of interviews, Michael Saylor, that talks about Bitcoin and a little bit about business, like his crypto interviews. And here, he's able to amass hundreds of millions of views talking about Bitcoin. He has Twitter followers, Facebook followers, Instagram, uh, YouTube, whatever, right? And that's this part. His personality, he hasn't really built that. Everything is built around this and he has the micro strategy, right? So, you know, he's not posting videos talking about what he ate yesterday or, um, you know, his morning routine. But if he did, that would fall under this category. So what I realized in my sense, I was trying to do the personal brand, but doing it in a business way, which means it was, it was kind of, I was trying to put it together, whereas it was supposed to be separate. So now what I realized is I'm going to keep all the business content under the business brand, and I'm going to build my personal brand separately as another entity entirely, which, which also means that Let's say I build this to a lot of followers, right? 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 subscribers, right? And I'm sponsoring my company. Let's say if I hypothetically, right? Like I, I, I own this company, I run, I'm making money and I'm also running my personal brand over here. And I can sponsor, I can, spo I can get a company to sponsor the videos so I can send people from, my, from this brand into the company, make money that way. Let's say at some point down the line, I sold this company, right? I sold it, whatever, I made money. Um, now I still have this brand, right? Even though I sold, which means I can now build something else to be the sponsor, or I can get someone else to come and be the sponsor of this entity. Hope that makes sense. So there are two very, very separate things. Um, and when you see it like that, when you see it as personal brand here, company here, and even though you make content for the company, you might come on and make content for your business. It's still the business, uh, business brand it still comes under that category. And that's kind of how I've been seeing it. And I think it's very, very important to kind of think of it in that way if you really want to understand, um, you know, how to really grow your channel, like grow that YouTube channel. Once again, I haven't grown my channel anything big, so I'm not the best person to take advice from, but this is just from my observations from other people and from my experience so far. And this is also my plan uh, moving forward. Now, I've experienced this Myself, I've seen other people do it. I've seen how Michael Sain has it set up, the, the, the Mr. B set up, his one's a tiny bit different, but um, you can still see how it's different because now he has the feastables, he has different channels with different, you know, uh, so his one's a bit more complicated, but it's still a similar structure. And you'll notice with many people who are very famous, uh, they kind of have that structure if you really think about it. And that's kind of the best way to go about it as well. Uh, because then you can really make the content you want to make as opposed to trying to co-mingle your business content with your personal brand, which they should be separate. All right, people, they try to make them into one thing and I think that's a bit of a mistake. Uh, not to mention because you will have different audiences on both. So that's kind of, I guess I spoke about my plan for 2024, which is really just separating those two out, pushing the business content in there, doing what I got to do and then having a separate thing that's sponsored by that. So really you got to think about it in terms of entities. If you have questions about it, you can let me know um, in the comments below. And uh, 
I'm more than happy to let, to let you know, uh, to kind of answer any of your questions. Um, but I think that's, that's it mainly for today. Just wanted to cover those key topics. So moving over to school, uh, my plan for 20, so what, you know, what else we're doing is really is moving over to school. We're also really growing aggressively. So you're going to be seeing more of my ads coming out. You're going to be seeing more content. I'm, you know, we have a crazy amount of content coming out this year, interviews, all kinds of stuff coming out. Um, what else? Yeah, it's, there's, there's a lot of, there's a, there's a lot of stuff coming. And the way I'm seeing the coaching consulting market really is like going forward. I think the, personally, I'm not the biggest fan of done for you services. Like I know some people, they can do it and it's, it's great, but really you want to, you know, there's people right now on YouTube, like Sergey and different kinds of people, like even Hormozy's offer, it's like a build and release kind of offer. And uh, ideally what you want to have is, because <coughs> if you think about it, right, you have, you have done for you, which is the, the highest model. Then you have like, um, let's say, uh, after that you have, let's say one to one, right? If you're talking about, you have done for you, one to one. Then you have group coaching, right? And then you have courses. Um, and then that's about it, right? So it's like courses, group coaching, one-to-one, -one, and done for you. I'm pretty sure that those are the ones that there are, right? So obviously you can pick one of them, right? Done for you, great, you're, you're a done for you agency. But even when you're doing done for you, you're normally giving people advice anyway. You have to give your clients advice, which means you're stepping into one-to-one -one coaching. Right, and realistically, if you take that advice and you put it and you start documenting it, now you're getting into the course territory, right? Because you're actually documenting it, and if you really package it together, you actually have a course, <laughs> which means you you have you have multiple things that you do on the back end, but you're selling it as done for you. And typically, if you do it that way, you also make like less money because you, you haven't really <laughs> taken those three and leverage them to the highest to that to their highest potential right if you talk out if you look at done for you we look at uh the one-to-one -one and the course if you package that differently you could actually make a lot more money right because if you're just saying done for you you're not getting the value from those two things because you're just doing them on the back end within the same thing so what we're doing really is in my mastermind is we really i'm trying to get them uh, give the benefit all of them packaged as one thing as opposed to saying oh I'm a one-to-one -one consultant or I'm a uh, group consultant or I'm a done for you agency or I'm a, I'm a course whereas realistically you should have all of them in some capacity it doesn't mean um, you know you'd have all of them exactly in like you'd have an agency and a group and no it doesn't mean like that but you need to have them all uh, packaged in a way where it makes sense, right? Like you'd have done for you where it's applicable and where you can do it at scale and leverage. You'd have a course where it makes sense. You'd have some one-to-one -one where it makes sense. And you'd have some group where it makes sense and community, right? We're also, we're also talking about community. So you wanna have all of them in a nice package. It's kind of how you wanna think about it, right? Um, because, you know, even if you think about something as simple as you know, like, like an apartment, right? If you have a completely unfurnished apartment with nothing inside it, that might be one thing, right? But if you start adding things into it and you know, you start furnishing it, you add this, you add a wash washing machine, you add a bed, now it starts to become more of a package. You add electricity, you add this and that, right? Now it becomes a package. Whereas a couch on its own might not be that useless, you know, useful. Electricity on its own is not that great. An apartment that's completely unfurnished in the middle of nowhere is not that great, but packaged in the right way, it becomes very valuable. So you want to look at your, your business. How can you take all these components, right? Find out where they fit in, but find out where you can do them at scale in a leveraged way and make one nice package to sell to your clients in one go. So in my case, <laughs> you know, we offer group, group coaching. We have the community, so that's another one, it's a community. You should, you should have, once again, these are little to no cost ways <coughs> to add value and build brand and build equity in your own business. It's literally just community and it's leverage. It's leverage, right? Because you could have 
a lot of, you can have infinite amount of people in your community. You can have the whole world join your community because you can put millions of people if you wanted to, right? The point is it's leverage. It's unlimited. Done for you is limited. So done for you, if you take on a client and you're like, I'm gonna give you a done for you service, it's a limited uh, because you have to keep hiring people to fulfill. Each client you have to hire to fulfill or each five clients you have to hire. So, which means each block of five clients you have to hire a new person, which means uh, you know, you're not, you're not leveraged um, to the best way possible. Whereas if you have like a group, you can kind of, it's, you know, infinitely more, more level or a community, it's way more leverage. Now, uh, now you, might, you might be asking, how do you keep adding value when it's that leverage? Right? If, if you have a million people, how can I add value? This is when the done for you comes in, but you've got to do it in a leverage way. You don't want to do it for every five, 10 people or hire someone new. You want to have it, um, you want to do done for you internally. So instead of, hey client, I'm going to do done for you, for you specifically, it's like, no, hey all clients, we've done the done for you and we're going to give it to you, all right? We're going to, we're doing it internally and we're giving it to you. So let me give you an example. So let's say in my company, because it sells ads, um, ads consulting uh, and business consulting, if someone comes in and they're like, hey, um, instead of me being a done for you agency that does ads, like, hey, come in and we'll run your ads. So I hire a media buyer every five clients, hire a media buyer every five, 10 clients. I can do, I can do in another way, which is client comes to me and I say to him, hey, um, I've already hired media buyers. I've, I've actually had a system that I've hired media buyers through. I'm going to get someone else to do it. You come in and I'll just give you a media buyer. Well, we've already hired them. So you can see how I've already done it done for you for them in my, in my internally. So I can just give a media buyer, you come into my community and you come into my group coaching and we'll show you how to use the media buyer. Right? So it's, it's very different. It's they come and I've done the done for you for them. Or as soon as they come, then we, we do it for them uh, in a system, in a very systemized productized way. And they still get the same kind of result. Now they come in community group coaching course, but here's your media buyer, done, done for you. As opposed to, um, hey, we'll do it for you, and then when they come, then we start a whole new customized product. So the point is you want to productize it, you want to productize your done for you internally. You know, when clients come, you kind of pop one out, so you have a media buyer here, here you go, here you go, and you have a system where it's like, you know, uh, applicants come in, they get interviewed, hired, trained, vetted into your process, given to the client. And now you have course and training. How do you manage the media buyer? Here's how you manage it. Here's group coaching and community to talk to us and talk to the community. So that's kind of how we go. And there's other people can do it other ways. So you can see even with like Cole Gordon, he does this with appointment setters and with uh, closers. So he says to you, hey, come to me. And I have a pipeline of setters and you know, client comes. Here's one set of you. Another client comes, here's another set of you. Right, it's a very it's a productized done for you. He's not saying, "Hey, client, come work with us, and we'll do the setting for you." That would be uh, a terrible business model. I mean, it, it it could be great for some people who actually like doing all the work for the clients, but um, you know, it's it's that's the one where it's, you basically have no leverage because then it's each five people you have to hire a setter to do the work for them, another setter to do the work. Whereas if you've already hired them and you kind of pass them out. As each client comes in, um, that's the leverage way of doing it. I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions about that, again, once again, just leave it below. But yeah, that's basically all I have for today. I think that's that's about it. So the leverage consulting, um, yeah, that's that's one of the biggest ones we're doing. So we have not just media buyers, the video editors, funnel automation experts, um, and so yeah, we're, we're kind of seeing what our clients need. Uh, but and once again, you can go further with done for you because we even have done for you funnels. We have funnel templates, right? So once again, a client comes to us, here's your funnel template, plug and play. And if, if you don't, if you don't even want to do that, here's your template. And then here's a funnel automation expert who will set it up for you. You just tell them, right? So you can see how we're able to pro productize that. And because this is a one-time thing, that same funnel automation expert working on their own because they're not hired by us, they can work on their own. They can uh, do work with a client and then as soon as they get another client, 
they're, they're freed up and they, they do the work that I client to. And it has nothing to do with me in the sense that I haven't hired them, the client is paying them, the client is working with them and they, they're managing our relationship. And I have no, um, you know, I've not hired them. So I'm, not, I'm never an agency. I'm always releasing uh, the value to the client. I hope that makes sense. So another way we do is uh, done for you ad scripts, um, done for you funnels. Uh, yep, mainly the funnels and automations is kind of what's done for you because I think the script, you know, we have templates, but the client still has to write it themselves and record the video themselves, right? So, you know, it's a bit, it's a bit different. But yeah, that's that's all I have for today. I think uh, we'll I'll be doing these probably like once a week where I'll just be sharing these ideas, like what I'm up to, what's going on, what are some ideas for coaches and consultants. And yeah, I think that's all I have for today and uh, I'll see you soon.